very good morning and welcome back to Kusumo for continuation of the Nordic opening here. The men's 10 kilometer is the next event in the freestyle. And of course, the start order determined by yesterday's sprint. And uh, that's uh, going to be uh, an interesting race with uh, Russia and Norway going head to head. The Norwegians already uh, rejoicing after their victory in the women's event. Sebastian with uh, Jochen Baylor. Jochen, of course, who was uh, a skier back in the 1980s, won a World Cup himself out in uh, Calgary. And the German team, of course, did so well for many years with uh, three men winning the overall World Cup, uh, Angra winning it twice. And uh, since then, things have uh, faded slightly. So a few problems for Jochen at the top uh, of the team and uh, obviously have to keep working away in an attempt to try and get back on terms with the best in the world. Long season for the German team. 31 races in all. And the Tour de Ski, a major focus for many of the teams this year. And of course, the World Championships in Val di Fiemme in Italy. With such a long season, it's almost impossible to be on form right the way through. And so you have to pick and choose the events that you want to do well in. Well, nice to hear from Jochen Baylor, of course, uh, highly respected man on the tour, had his differences with the German Federation and then got the plum job of being head coach for the German squad. And uh, he had a huge amount of success uh, early on with that, but uh, we'll see how he gets on today. Germany relying on uh, a few of the big names. Teichmann, of course, uh, we've seen in action this year already. We've got Joseph Wenzel. I wonder how he'll do, a man from Sviesel. He'll be in action starting number 75. So we're back in Kusamo in the north of Finland for continuation of the Nordic opening. Let's have a look at the sprint race from yesterday. This determines the start positions for today. And it looked at one stage as though Petter Nortuk was going to come through and win again. But Mike, many say you only have one sprint in your body in a race. Nortuk used that on the final climb. And it was Kriakov who came through to snatch the win. And you can see just how much that meant to the Olympic champion. It does, but it's so, so so rare do we see Peter Norto get being taken in that last 80 to 100 meters. Will that knock his confidence? I don't think so. I think that's one thing he's got bucket loads of. <laughs> and uh, I, I hope to see him going well here today. So he will start uh, number 115. We've got 117 starters in all. So uh, if you're short of time today, now is the time to go and do whatever you've got to do because it's going to take, uh, what, almost an hour to get all the starters off the line. And uh, it's only a 10 kilometre race, so it will be sort of 25 minutes maximum of uh, action. The women completing the course in 12, the men are going around twice. Could be a time of what, 22, 23 minutes? Uh, possibly as tight as that. Um, coming back up into the stadium, of course, we're going to be up the major climb a couple of times. And um, fatigue is also the factor. Interesting to see the the waxing being put on, they're putting a very, very cold base wax on initially, and you can see it, it bends up the way, it's a very brittle wax, and then the powder's on top. You have to be careful you don't, uh, with the with the drill, uh, make sure that you don't overheat the base because the wax comes straight back off again. 
and the, the storage of the ski is so important. Uh, I love these trucks. Only about eight nations have been able to afford uh, a mobile wax and cabbing. The Swiss ski team this year have got one for the first time, and it just makes life so much easier in terms of travel, organizing your skis, keeping the bases clean and tidy. Well, there are the conditions for today, 13.9 degrees. That's 13 below freezing. Um, <laughs> it's bitterly cold, but uh, they'll, they'll be used to training in these conditions. The Russians, well, this is probably warm for those who come from Siberia. It's those from Europe that might struggle a little. Let's have a look at the profile of the course. Remember, it's two times around this five kilometer. You can see that initial climb that saps the energy out of anyone who goes too hard. The climb up to the two kilometer stage is still pretty stiff, Mike, and we should get a split time there. It is, and then of course the final climb, the spin around, the back up into the stadium before heading out and doing the same a second time. Sjurudda goes number 21 for Norway. He looked pretty handy in Yelavari last weekend. Toby Angra, former champion for Germany, goes off number 30. Other big names, Giorgio De Centa, the veteran in the, uh, in the race today for Italy. I hope uh, he can make up a few places. Axel Teichmann's got a lot of work to do. He was never going to feature in the sprint event, but I'm not convinced by Teichmann's form as yet. Mr. Uh, Sorry, 53, of course, uh, Colonia. A poor race yesterday by his high standards from last year. He really needs to pull it back to date. China with Hu Zhu going 84, just ahead of uh, Jan Christian Dahl, who certainly should be able to make up uh, a few places, get a little closer to the leaders. And then uh, as we go down, we get to the stronger, stronger athletes. Emil Jonsson going 103. He was uh, disappointed yesterday, Jonsson. Skied out of it in the early stages with, uh, I guess it was a mistake on his part, but uh, he's experienced enough to know exactly where he needs to be in a sprint event. Well, despite the cold, there's plenty of wildlife around. A few moose wandering around the, uh, the forest, or elk as they call them up here. And we have just a few seconds before the start of the men's 10 kilometer freestyle, two times round the 5K loop. So away we go, and it's Perakoda of Ukraine who is the first man out of the starting blocks. And the track still in very good condition. Jens Fjellbrich there, just uh, making sure with only what? He's only got a well, two minutes, three minutes before he starts, keeping all his warm gear on in these temperatures. Lazutkin for Belarus. I think Lazutkin with his 86th position in Yelavara last week, I think he expected better for his opening races of the World Cup. 29-year-old is experienced now. Even Babikov, I think he's been uh, watching the Olympics sw swimming, beating his breast before the start of the race. Babikov, uh, of course, switching nationality to Canadian and uh, a big help with the Canadian team. Certainly he's played a large part in their rise to glory. And uh, now they're relying on the likes of uh, Harvey to do the damage. We'll see how the Canadians get on today. Lucy Einan, uh, well they say they don't know when it happens but when he's on a good day he's on great form and could this be his day well the Finns do need a little bit of impetus a little bit of uh, belief back in themselves So the first four are underway. We've got another 113 starters to go here in Kusumo. Jens Filbrick about to get underway for Germany and he's uh, a man that can certainly improve his lot here in uh, Kusumo. Seen him around for a while. He certainly was a top junior, Phil Brick, uh, taking two bronze medals at Junior World Championships and has been a good uh, mainstay in the German team. Voronel. 
racing for Belarus today. He's only had three World Cup starts, so he's pretty inexperienced. This is the start of his career, 22 years old. Interesting reading yesterday, Mike. Uh, it's, it's been a long time now since anyone over the age of 27 has won a World Cup sprint event. So it's very much becoming uh, the, the young man's game. I wonder if that's just reaction and uh, bold confidence, flexible, uh, easy muscles uh, and timing. Is it not to do with power? Power generation? A lot of power, without a doubt. And I think there's, a, there's so much involved with it, the tactics of the sprint races as Hornia takes uh, the corner quite wide on his exit. Yeah, but the more tactical it is, the more you would have thought the experienced skier would come through and win it. Yeah, good point. But uh, when you've got Nortug, the age has dropped clearly because of Nortug over the last couple, couple of years. Jonsson, again, doesn't do well up here for some reason, but he really has lifted sprinting. Well, I wonder what Jean-Marc Gaillard will do today. He's uh, won a World Cup. In fact, he's uh, been on the podium four times in his career. And uh, although this doesn't count as a World Cup, he'd be delighted to get anywhere near the top three. Would be a fantastic result for the Frenchman. 32 years old, he's, uh, well, he's certainly not in the twilight of his career, but he's probably only got a couple of seasons left. Maybe Sochi will be his swan song. Important even in these temperatures to, to keep the fluids topped up. It's, uh, it is only 10 kilometers, 22, 23 minutes racing. But after a warm up of four to five kilometers, you need to rehydrate. Kozicek out of the Czech Republic. Lukas Bauer, obviously the best known of the Czechs, but we haven't seen Bauer on uh, his best form so far this year. I was a little disappointed with him in uh, Yelivari. I know it's early season, but I'm, I'm just waiting for him to return to the form he had when he won the overall World Cup. And I think well, Bauer, like many, will be viewing the Tour de Ski. That's where he has the endurance, the strength of mind as well. But remember, uh, for Bauer, it's um, Achilles tendon is uh, holding him back a little at the moment. That was a quick shot of uh, Marcus Hellner of Sweden, the world champion over the sprint distance as we go to Ellefsen, racing for USA, comes out of Vail, and the American women doing exceptionally well. I hope that raises the performances in the men's team, but it doesn't always work that way. I'm nearly tripping there. Interestingly, Hellner was a long way away from his start. He was outside this inner stadium part, so panicking with his skis. Well, he starts number 18, so he still has a minute and a half to make his way into the start area. 15 is UC Similai. Comes from Yevaskula, which is uh, a bit like the, the, the Loughborough of Finland. It's where all the physiological research is done, a very good sporting university. And uh, consequently, a number of their top athletes base themselves there. Now, let's get uh, an indication on the split time. Well, per Pericorda, this is only his second start ever at World Cup, so he's going to set the... the the lead time to this stage, but surely it's not going to last long. Well, Marek Bjurgen was the only woman under eight minutes to this point, and Perkoda is 7.42, about eight seconds quicker than uh, Marek Bjurgen of Norway. It shows the strength of Marek Bjurgen. Absolutely. This is good skiing, nice technical work here. Well, you can hear the squeaking of both the skis and the poles on the snow. That's an indication of just how cold it is. And the temperature has started to drop again here. We're two hours ahead of UK time. So it's coming up to uh, 20 to 1. And by 20 to 2, it will be dark. <laughs> and by 20 to 3, it's not safe to be outside. It's going to be so cold. <laughs> what a place to live. Helner, he did make it to a start on time, just grabbing the skis, which had some final preparation work done to the bases. And a good start. He didn't sprint well yesterday, Patrick. Uh, of course, 70th overall in the 1.4 classic sprint race. 
Yeah, a little surprise. So world champion over the sprint. You would have thought uh, he could do something, uh, at least get into the semi-finals, but he didn't even make the top 30. So he's left himself with a lot of work to do. Might be advantageous to get an early start, Mike. By the time uh, Nortug goes off, the temperature will have gone down another two degrees at least. The snow's going to be that much slower. Do you know, what, and with Helner finishing third last weekend in Yelavara, over 15 kilometers freestyle, he's got to be feeling good as an early starter. Back to the Polish now with Sterega. Saw him on the World Cup last year. He didn't manage to break into the top uh, 30 at any stage his best actually 45th that was in the sprint event in Davos but he is better at the freestyle we have a new leader at 3.1 kilometers Jens Philbrick has been through and uh, over that break uh, one, of, one of the race favorites Sierra Rota of uh, Norway has started so we're going to try and track him down I think uh, you fancy him for a good run really on the basis of last weekend's performances well in the relay of course Sierra Rota he uh, he did so much for Norway gave them that uh, what was it some 15 18 seconds lead going into the last leg and it was all down to Rota Andreas Katz great name uh, good positive start you can uh, see the difference the contrast between the men and the women's by the time they hit this first corner I don't think uh, any men have double polled used the poles round the corner because they built so much speed up before they've gone into it and then just uh, a delicate little step turn round the corner and away trying to maintain as much speed as possible now we go with Chris Freeman one of the best of the Americans on the tour an early start for Chris, 32 years old, and he'll be looking uh, at finishing in the top 30, certainly today. Jean-Marc Gaillard, 7.16, the target time set by Philbrick, which uh, looked good. Philbrick, very dynamic technique, Mike, but I, I'm just wondering whether he's going to run out of puff before the end of this one. And it's an interesting one, these cold temperatures, the aggressiveness of the snow, you hit this first seven, eight minutes a little over your comfort zone and you will be punished later on the track. Devin Kershaw, he's obviously read his research that says you can get away with uh, 10 seconds of all-out sprint at the start of the race without paying a price as far as the lactate is concerned, but still looked a little ener over-energetic for a 10K. That was uh, Axel Teichmann just uh, l putting his skis to one side as Sergei Churisev of Russia starts his... 10,000 meter run. Good news for Helner, we said maybe a slight advantage going so early in the field. He has taken the lead ahead of Jesperson at 1.4, the top of the huge climb after the descent out of the stadium. It's a slim lead though. Teichmann, tall, strong, although perhaps not in his prime. Michael Semenov of Belarus. The strangest story with Teichmann with his, was his withdrawal from the 2006 Olympic Games, Mike, when he was on such good form, an infected hair follicle, I think, putting him out of action for the whole of the Games. Incredible, isn't it? Four-year period, as you say, he was on top of the world and uh, leading into that. And yesterday, he got so badly infected, he could not take part. Many of you will recognise number 30, Toby Angerer. Denis Volotka of Kazakhstan. Nice steady start from Volotka. The Kazakhstan team now they've got to be taking some positive energy from Paul Tarainen's wonderful start to the season. It's classic, it's good, but uh, Paul Tarainen has worked so hard on getting his skating up to pace and it really has worked for him. Well, Jens Philbrick uh, skied the same sort of way as Jespersen with that dynamic jump off the 
left leg. I think Jesperson uh, just easing it down. But you can see that little injection of power. Gains in, what, an inch or two on each stride. It's an impressive time. 7.08, eight seconds inside Philbrick. That is a really positive start. That's, a, uh, that's so focused. I love Jesperson's technique, the way he keeps his weight. Uh, yeah, the upper body almost seems central, but the lower body flowing left to right to get the energy through the skis. Sharapanov goes as we go back to 3.1. This time it is Marcus Hellner who is approaching. He was leading at the first split just after one and a half kilometers, but the margin only 0.2 of a second over Jesperson. Which one of the two has fared better in the closing stages? 7.08, the time he's after. You can see the red banner at the top of the hill on the left. That is where the clock will stop for Marcus Hellner. 3.1 in the end means absolutely nothing, Mike, but he needs to be within five seconds or so of the leader to uh, be in contention. And I I think he's going to be comfortably inside that margin, if not five seconds ahead. It's going to be tight. Oh, Half a second between the two of them. Now this for me, it, uh, Jesperson has performed well on these tracks. He wasn't impressed with how poorly, by his standards, uh, they were in the Classic yesterday. So Jesperson's leading... Uh, just ahead, what, half a second ahead of Hellner. Yeah, Jesperson's technique at the top of the climb looked better. Uh, he still managed to maintain that fluent style. Hellner starting to look a little bit ragged come the top of the climb. He'll recover, but I think maybe that's an indication of their level of fitness at the moment. 34 is Matty Heikkinen. Should be a bit of a cheer for him. Finnish men have struggled here in uh, Finland. Jauhi Yervi, I think, uh, has been the best of their performers over recent years. Heikkinen uh, can produce it when he wants. Uh, Liberets, we saw him do, well, take the bronze medal in the 15 kilometer, although he is stronger in the classic, and that was a classic race. Yeah, but uh, he, he, his one win has come actually in the freestyle. He won in Davos, I believe, uh, in uh, 2010 that's doubly difficult not only is it a tough course but it's at altitude so uh, maybe Heikkinen will show his best form when we head down to Switzerland later on in the season Rutter of Norway uh, trying to match Jesperson his teammate he can't do that but he'll only be a couple of seconds outside three seconds is the margin very nice start early on in this race if he stays within five he uh, he'll certainly be able to make a charge in the closing stages Oh, lovely technique. You feel he's keeping himself within his levels at the moment, and uh, we'd expect next time round he's going to be opening up fully. Now, skating came in in 1985, Mike. Seems like yesterday, but uh, I guess that's quite a long time ago. But there are still developments year on year. They think of new ways, more efficient ways of skiing. What do you think in the last five years is the biggest change? The, the I think the margins have changed have been reducing obviously when as you say 30 years ago it came in for me it's just hand placements and slightly more hip placement forward and the arms especially the non-lead side being wider of body we mentioned that earlier but not so many uh, other technical changes except the cadence the frequency of movement yeah a much greater flow i think higher tempo and perhaps a little more v2 than they used to do in the past because they are essentially stronger Early days in this men's 10 kilometre, but the lead, uh, just to keep us on our toes, has been changing uh, frequently. Churishev now the new leader at the intermediate at 3.1 kilometres. Some impressive stuff from the Norwegians, as you would expect. Marcus Hellner is going well for Sweden. What about Alex Harvey? So much potential. He's still a young man, Mike, so uh, I guess needs to be a little bit careful about the quantity of racing that he does. I think that's true, and uh, we saw all the amazing performances from Devin Kershaw, who's a little off form this year, and I think Alex Harvey has come into the season a little off form with his 36th last weekend, over 15 kilometers. We'd normally expect him to be top 10, top 15 for sure. Maurice Magnifica. There's another of my favorites for today, Magnifica, Patrick. He's got an earlier start. He will latch into some big names when he comes round after 5Ks. 
As we look at Jesperson, I can tell you Marcus Helner has just come through the stadium at the halfway mark. He's ahead of score Rota and Jesperson, but only by 1.3 seconds. Jesperson still skiing very smoothly. He's picked up the Italian Fabio Passini, who's going to latch on behind the Norwegian. That's uh, a little bit of fortune for Passini to have someone to break the wind. Uh, and it's not uncommon for this to happen. And those who start early, of course, don't get that benefit because there's no one out on the tracks when they start. So great to see Jesperson again. For me, I think he is one of the best, if not the best technical skater in the, in the world. How annoying is that going to be to have an Italian just sitting behind you, not prepared to do any work? We've seen it in the relays many times. Very annoying when, uh, of course, the Italian uh, is one... Uh, sorry, it's just going to remain there, stuck in behind him for the wind uh, drag. Martin Jonsrud Sumbi, the winner of the opening event of the season. He's obviously on form. Question is... What can he do today? He's seen his teammate Jesperson produce uh, a very good time in the early splits. He might well have seen Turishev go through. It was on the big screen in the stadium. <laughs> now, Hel yeah, Marcus Helner not happy with uh, the man tracking him, which uh, is uh, Giorgio De Cente. He's not going to say too much for Giorgio, surely. No, he's not. I'm quite sure he's not. But uh, this is a, a good marker for De Cento just to warm up into his race. He's, remember, one lap behind effectively, so fresher leg. And a 40-year-old, surely De Cento needs a little bit of uh, assistance in the first <laughs> part. But uh, I'm sure we'll see him uh, placing top 10, top 5 maybe again, De Cento. Yeah, I wonder what his, well, his aims are obvious this year. It's to do well at the World Championships in uh, Val di Fiume. So he won't be too concerned about his results. He'll be, just be trying to plan the perfect preparation. Not easy to do. And if he gets ill at any stage, that really throws you in your preparation because you lose two, three weeks of, of full-on training. Oh, it messes it all up. Well, I think Heikkinen's going to be about eight to maybe 11 seconds down here. It's, uh, it's a poor start, 9.2. Or is it a paced start? Possibly, possibly. Uh, there's a suspicion that the early leaders have gone a little bit quick at 3.1. That would include uh, Turishev of Russia, who's gone through in 3.12. Marcus Helner went through in 3.12. Helner looked uh, reasonably comfortable. And, of course, Jesperson, who's right up there as well. Rota started number 21, already starting to make his mark here. Legkov is uh, a monster of a man, so, so powerful. He'll have a good sprint finish at the end of this one, without a doubt. Takes that first corner very, very hard. I heard that uh, the Russians may be in the, in the trial or the 1.4 kilometer time trial to make the top 30. Legkov didn't make it. Shurnusov didn't make it. And I think it was down a little bit to waxing too light. They didn't have the grip up the final climb. You don't think it was to do with tactics at all? Save yourself, uh, because uh, those who completed the sprint will certainly still be feeling a uh, an amount of fatigue after their efforts yesterday. They have to be, don't they, to, to have gone round that 1.4 at uh, the intensities they did. It would be inhuman if it didn't slightly affect you today. Miyazawa of Japan, he Which entered the time trial but didn't have to compete in the knockout, so fresher than most. And he looks freezing. <laughs> Been standing around for 10, 12 minutes before his start. Now, Jesperson is into the last two kilometers now, and already the work rate is going up, dragging the Italian uh, with him.
I think that's Fabio Passini tucked in behind Jesper Sinn. Yes, it is. 24 seconds to margin at the moment. So we have a new leader at 8.1 as last year's World Cup champion Dario Colonia leaves the starting area. We haven't seen anything from Colonia so far this season to say he's on World Cup winning form. But uh, when it comes, it will be brilliant. There's no doubt about that. And um, we're suspecting that his efforts are going to go into the Tour de Ski and the World Championships. Can Helna match Jesperson? Only separated by half a second when they came through here on the first lap at 3.1 kilometers. It's going to be close again, Mike. It's going to be very close. I think uh, he's just going to be out, so he could pull this back if he is, in fact, out. He's going to be getting all the split times, though, for sure. Giorgio De Centa leading Helner up the climb. De Centa with uh, a somewhat old-school technique, but uh, at 40, we can excuse that through 8.1. And the margin, 5.3 seconds. The advantage to Jesperson of Norway, who certainly looks stronger on the second climb. David Hoffer. It's not related to Lukas Hoffer. Don't think so. I'll check that one out. Lukas Hoffer, one of the uh, top Italian biathletes, will be in action in uh, Ostersund in Sweden this afternoon. Now, how is Rota doing? First time round at 3.1, Mike, after seven minutes or so he was down on Marcus Hellner by two seconds and he was trailing his teammate Jesperson by two and a half seconds I think he might well have been able to sitch, switch this one around he's looking very very good and he's still got 15 seconds to get inside his teammate Jesperson we could be looking Patrick at the at the winner of the whole event to be taking almost 10 seconds out of Jesperson and I think he's still got something left we said last time he made it look easy he's beginning to pick it up yeah looking very smooth 1.8 kilometers to go for Sjur Rotha of uh, Norway an impressive start to his season and he's almost certainly secured his uh, place on the bus south for the rest of the uh, World Cup tour not a strong though Rotha in the, in the classic technique that is his weakness uh, and, and we see most of the top the best in the world are almost equally as good in each of the disciplines well that's a fair point but the Norwegians do not need any more good classic skiers they've got plenty of them over the last decade or so the only weakness they've had is their the, the numbers and the quality of their freestyle skiers that is so true and they've brought in by athletes uh, who are full-time skaters all the biathlon races are purely skating so that's a good point Jesperson dancing over the top, the, the toughest part. He's on absolute maximum at the moment. Well, it's time to produce a sprint of uh, some description. Philbrick's time of 22.37 is going to be well beating. We're looking at around 22.15 for Jesperson as he comes into the last 100 metres. The Italian that has uh, tracked him all the way round now has to complete the last lap on his own that was uh, Fabio Passini Jesperson finishes 22 11.5 very fatigued over the closing stages but a, a margin a leading margin of 26 seconds good work from him good enough for top three possibly but no bonus seconds from yesterday's sprint. So he gives away 56 seconds to his teammate uh, Petter Norton. It's tough on those early starters. They know they have to try and pull something back. Of course, everybody is given their best to try and close the gap on someone else. Soon be only four seconds off the pace. Helner, who was trailing at 8.1, some 15 seconds off uh, Rota. He was only six seconds down on Chris uh, Andre Jesperson, who leads at the moment. And he looks to have done reasonably well. He's not going to match 22 11, but he should move into second place. And uh, that's nice to see Marcus Helner starting to come back to form. 
but the margins are just so, so slender after 10 kilometers. 3.3. Oh, yeah, that's a good comeback. He's taken three seconds out of Jesperson in the last couple of Ks. Legkov, very good sprinter. He looks strong, doesn't he, Mike? In fact, all the Russians looking a little bit stronger this year. He looks uh, to it same similar build to Petukov, who uh, is a phenomenal sprinter. And again, Lekov uh, not uh, going around the, the sprint course for more than one time yesterday. He has to be feeling good today. Well, he's set off at a sprint pace. He's going to be uh, comfortably inside Churishev's time of 7.07. .07. Seven minutes on the clock at the moment. He's going to be, what, three seconds ahead? 3.6 the margin. Russia have one and two at 3.1. We need to uh, track down Turishev, who set a very good early time. We'll try and pick him up through five kilometers. He's dropped off the pace a little, down to five seconds behind Marcus Helner. So uh, Helner still with the fastest time at 5K. He overcooked it on the first lap and has uh, come in in second position at the moment. Rota into the finish, 22-11. It's a comfortable lead for Shurota. Wow, great stuff. 6.3 the margin, and at the last split, well, he's just lost a couple of seconds, but still a convincing time and a potential win. Kusumo hosting the Nordic opening and we're halfway through the meet. It's the men's 10 kilometer that is underway at the moment and uh, we've still got a number of starters, 117 due to start, 30 seconds in between each of them. So uh, it doesn't take much to work out that it's gonna be about 58 minutes to get all of the athletes out on the tracks. Well, let's update you on what is going on. Dario Colonia, the World Cup winner from last year has already started having failed to finish in the top 30 of the sprint yesterday. Today. Mike, he started pretty well. He started fantastically well. He's kept it steady by his own high standards to the 1.4. And now he's picking the pace up, going through 3.1, only half a second off the lead time. 14.14, the fastest time at 6.4. Jesperson went through in 14.19.5. And so uh, Magnifica looks as though he is going to be up there with uh, the best. This wind blower, there's a little bit of uh, powder being blown onto the track, and that can be annoying on the skating skis. Dry powder will be slower than the compressed track. Good start for Magnifica, Mike. Oh, 2.6 outside. That's a great start for Magnifica, and can he? He will be getting the split times, and as the later starters come on, it's, 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 it is an advantage getting the timings from the athletes ahead of you. There's still some big names to start. Sun Qinghai for China. And the Chinese, when they send athletes on to the World Cup, you know they're good. Whether they can compete with the Norwegians and Swedes, I'm not sure. But uh, it's nice to see them here. And I hope we see something pretty special from this young man today. He's a good sprinter. Remember the Olympics, uh, 21st position. Knocked out in the first round yesterday, but he still made the top position. Sunbi of Norway coming up towards 6.4. The winner of the uh, race in Yelavari last weekend. This looks respectable, Mike. It's looking very good. Not maybe quite the yes. drive he had last weekend. I think six or seven, maybe eight seconds off the pace of the leaders. Maybe a fraction more, actually, because he's still got a way to go before he reaches 6.4. There's not the urgency in the skiing that we saw last weekend. No, there's not. The confidence, and, and it's strange. Just seven days later, what, what is it? What are the factors that where he can win the 15-kilometer in this technique last Saturday? And then uh, a week later, he's still very good, but doesn't look like the winner again today. 12 seconds outside. Could be the skis, could be his form. And of course, last weekend, it is different. When the snow's minus one degrees as it was last weekend, it's so much faster, the, there's much less friction. These snow crystals are sharp, they're aggressive at minus 14. 
Well, there are the standings at 6.4. Rota, we know, who is already through the finish and has the lead for Norway ahead of Jespersen. Is, uh, he's gone well. Marcus Hellner faded a little after a very positive start. Devin Kershaw of Canada, 35 seconds down after 6.4. Remember, it's a 10-kilometre race, so from that point in, another 3.6 k's to go. That's uh, roughly, roughly nine minutes skiing from, from there to the finish. Estonia's Sarapu. Now, the Estonians traditionally have been very, very good at classic skiing, and uh, they've uh, dropped away over recent years. Legkov, has he managed to keep his momentum? I think he has. In fact, I think he's raising his game. Legkov, the next to come up over the rise. Well, that is fantastic. Four seconds inside. He started fast and he's kept the pace going, but uh, you have to remember there is one more brutal climb and it's easy enough to lose four or five seconds on that climb alone. And it's as you come back into the stadium at the finish. So he needs to have saved something in reserve. Magnifica now coming up to 8.1. Magnifica in third position at 6.4, just 6.7. This will give us a very good indication of whether he is uh, starting to up the pace. A little bit of traffic out on the course he's got to find a way past Alex Harvey of uh, Canada who's not looking on his very best form now I think Harvey will uh, stick in behind Magnificat he'll say I don't mind a Norwegian coming through but I'm not having a Frenchman overtaking me <laughs> and, and you can see the different tempo Harvey was going he's tired he's going for the long glide option he tried to up his momentum as soon as he slotted in behind Magnificat Colonia might well be spoiling the party. Yeah, Colonia only half a second outside the pace at 3.1, remember. He's got about uh, 18 seconds from here, so I think uh, he's still going to be five or six seconds outside the leading time set by Legkov of Russia. Even more, 11.4 is the margin. So uh, it doesn't look as though it's going to be Dario Colonia's day and we have to wait for the champion from last year to uh, come to his very best form. Not unusual for him to have a slightly slower start to the season, Mike. No, that is true, but uh, and, and it is an indication of form right now. Colonia was only three seconds behind Legkov uh, going through the stadium. Now he's dropped it down to 11, so he just hasn't got the form the magic that we see so many times that he has, he's dropping off, therefore tired, fatigued so early on. Well, he did get uh, he did get his first podium in this stage World Cup last year, but he didn't get a win until the 18th of December last year, which uh, was in uh, Rogla. Didn't even win uh, when they raced in uh, Davos, his hometown, so that was a little bit surprising. But uh, if you're a fan of Colonias, don't panic quite yet. Wait until Christmas before you judge him, and uh, you'll then get some expectation of whether he's going to be able to defend the title he won last year. Rote is sitting pretty there in the in the winners, the champions chair, but is Lekov? I think he, he might. It is it's very, very close. Lekov might knock him off that seat. Well, the Norwegian fans, I think, outnumber the Finnish fans here, which is always a little disappointing. We do need the Finns to pick it up. Shurota, great run from him. He's uh, a young man, but Petter Nortug was saying one of the best things about the Norwegian team this year is that they have new blood and they have some very strong young athletes, which is making all the difference to the spirit in the team. And the fact that it is pushing him, he just can't sit on his laurels because he knows he'll be out of the team before, uh, before he can say uh, 
slow down. <laughs> That's so interesting. It's the same as happening in the in the biathlon team. Uh, Bjorn Darwin was saying it's it's actually really good training around 19, 20 year olds, 20 years younger than him. He says that spirit is being transferred. Lenkov is pushing nicely. Yeah, his lead at 6.4, 3.3 seconds, and uh, he might he might have uh, increased that. But uh, Rota was very good over the closing stages. 18:11 is the fastest time so far. He still has a lead of 2.6, but a second, a valuable second, has gone missing. And Rota was six seconds, in fact, behind Lekov at 6.4. Forty-two. Alex Harvey coming in towards the finish, but behind him is Morris Magnifica, who has had a wonderful run, and he pushes Rota down into second place. Twenty-two dead. Mike, what was it that made you think he was going to go well today? I just I had a look at his relay time. I've, I looked at his early season form uh, when he was racing in Norway, and it showed a whole lot of good form. He didn't do well last week, and that could be the nerve. So I thought. He's got used to the World Cup now, and then seven days later, he's more relaxed. And boy, did that come through today. Well, I hope you put a few uh, euros on, on that one. 20 to 1 were the odds on Magnifica at the start of today. Oh, Magnifica must be so relaxed to, to see. He, he looked at, obviously, who's winning is Rota. He knows that's going to be one of the best times of the day, and, and he beat him by four seconds. Well, that is now the man that uh, Alexander Legkov has to beat. The difference between Magnifica and Legkov going through 6.3 was 6.3 seconds. At the uh, 8.1 kilometre marker, Legkov was 9.2 ahead of Magnifica. So he's travelling better than the uh, Frenchman, but at that stage he was travelling slower than Rota. But we know that Rota is down in second place at the finish. Nothing he can do to change the results. 13 seconds outside for Dario Colonia, and at 6.4 it, uh, it was a similar margin. In fact, he's lost another second and a half. I think the good news for the early starters is the snow is beginning to fall much, much more heavily now. Therefore, the tracks will be a little slower. Sunbi of Norway could be about to lose the Red Bib as the World Cup leader. 20.5, the margin between himself and Magnifica of France. And, uh, well, those margins will change. It's, it's difficult at this stage to predict where people are going to start tomorrow, Mike, because of all the bonuses that were given for yesterday's sprint event. That is true. Here's Legkov coming up. Uh, I can't believe the amount of time that Magnifica took out of uh, Suor Rote over the last 1.9 he took a turnaround of 11 seconds and Lakov's a big heavy athlete uh, carrying that weight that muscle up the hill might just lose a little on Magnifica he's traveling well he's traveling well he just needs to think in terms of technique keep the work rate high but think of efficiency as well try and keep the hips forward and the shoulders high he's getting lower and lower as he climbs the hill 21 to 12 on the clock at the moment less than a minute to get inside Magnifica's leading time it will take roughly 40 seconds from here it's good I think Patrick it's going to be very tight it's so, so tight, his teammate uh, behind him. If he's round the final corner in 21.40, then he should be safe. He is. 21.36, 24 seconds to deny the Frenchman a win here on Finnish snow. I can't believe uh, 49, his own teammate, is uh, almost getting in the way. No, I think that's just uh, going to give him a boost. Felix Arnin, it is, finishing alongside Legkov. 7.9 the margin. Legkov goes into top position. A 40 to 1 odds. Uh, first thing this morning, they will change tomorrow because he's just proved that he's on very good form. Oh, he is. And, and, and the thing about Legkov on a gutsy course like this, he is the ultimate fighter. He does not go easy on himself at all, and you need that mentality on this track. Axel Teichmann's had a minute and a half taken off him by the Russian Ilya Shurnazov. So Teichmann's uh, well below form. Can't quite work him out. He never looks as though he's working hard, Mike. But when he's on form, he travels like the wind. He does. I'd love to see Teichmann, and I, and I really hope we will see that this season for the World Championships, where Teichmann is back at his best. 
Russians are going well, Patrick, really well. Boosted perhaps by their victory in the men's sprint yesterday. Kriakov coming through to take the sprint win. Or is it the fact that their training has been building and building and building over the last few years, all in preparation for Sochi next year? I think that's a huge factor. Uh, mentioned it before, we saw that in London this summer for the Summer Olympic Games. The home nation do have a psychological an advantage, financial advantage maybe from where they normally were going into an Olympic season. Dario Colonia heading in towards the finish. Uh, despite the success he's had over the years, the, he of course won the overall World Cup in 2011 and he won it last season as well. He'll be hoping to make it three out of three. He's only got 11 wins in his career. This is not gonna be number 12, although, uh, Incidentally, today does not count as a World Cup victory. It will be the result of the mini tour tomorrow that go down as uh, a World Cup victory and consequently only 50 points on offer for the winner of today's race. I always think that's a little bit harsh. Legkoff certainly will be feeling it's a bit harsh because he's sitting at the top of the pile at the moment, 21.52. But some of the big names have still got to start. Dolinovic goes for Belarus and... Uh, as you'll know by now, we have 117 starters. Just a bib number 89, Kali Halverson uh, from Sweden. He's just gone through the 1.4. He's taken the new quickest time. And that's a uh, half a second faster than Lekhoff at that stage. Johan Jervi, long uh, serving member of the Finnish team. Arguably uh, a little better in classic than he is in skating. Hoffer of Italy is going to find himself roughly between 18 and 20 seconds off the pace of the winners. Good finish from Hoffer. He carried really good speed around that final corner. Now trying to find every ounce of effort he's got left for the last 50 meters. 22.05, the time by Rota. He won't match that. 22.09 by Schernersoff might just get inside, and he does. Fourth place for Hoffer, and that's a very, very good run for the Italian. Nice to see them floating to the top of the pile, but uh, still nothing he could do about Lekhoff's time. Just too good. 21.52 for the 10 kilometers. Mike, they're getting close to 30 kilometers an hour, and it's a tough course. It's incredible. There are, there are fast descents, uh, there are segments where you get recovery, but the time is outstanding, under 22 minutes. Now, let's see what Theodore Pedersen is made of. He's last year's sprint champion. That was uh, certainly, you would have got good odds on him being sprint champion at the beginning of the season, but he was consistent, he entered all the sprint races, he made it his target, and he achieved his aim. Anders Sudegren, he likes the time trials, I think this might be a little bit short. Beautiful technician, absolutely fantastic technician, but he doesn't have an ounce of sprint in it. <laughs> he's, he's a little like Legkov, he will fight and fight and fight. Emil Jonsson, well, we know all about his sprinting powers. Disappointing yesterday, didn't quite work out for Jonsson, and consequently he starts number 103 instead of 117. And he'll be angry about that. I hope we see a big fighting performance from him. Halverson, his teammate, coming up towards 3.1. Remember, he was ahead of Legkov by half a second at 1.4. It's a long wait, Patrick, for the, the best of the pack or from yesterday's sprint races. They've got to wait a long time, and the distractions over that one hour of watching and being aware of others racing. Are we going to see the second Russian victory in succession? Kriakov won yesterday. Legkov is looking very, very good. Mike, who out of the last starters? Ironically, uh, although the best from yesterday start last, um, they are the best sprinters because yesterday over the 1400 meter distance, and uh, it, it means that not. It doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to challenge. 
Not necessarily. I think Yaparov, he's a great sprinter, but he is good at the distance. Of course, the one and only Pedro Nortug uh, has to be the main name out there to threaten Legkov. Yeah, Nort Nortug's aim will be to finish within 30 seconds of Legkov, which will give him a lead over the Russian at the start of tomorrow. That's true, and, and as Nortug predicted two days ago, he said as long as he's around another athlete on that last hill coming into the stadium on the last climb tomorrow, then he has a big chance. But he also has to learn his lesson from tomorrow. Don't expend too much energy on the final climb. Here we go with Lukas Bauer, the number one Czech former overall World Cup winner. He is a class act when he's on form, but we've seen no sign of that so far this year. I hope, uh, I hope he sparks into form. Just thinking back to last year, Patrick, and uh, Pedro Nortug on the same track on the same day. He took 22 seconds out of any other athlete over this 10 kilometers. So maybe he's got that magic again lined up for today. It's not necessarily a course that you would think suited Nortug. Quite big, steep climbs. He was, uh, he was so motivated on that day and, uh, well, he'll, he'll have the similar motivation mindset again. Competitive start from Goldberg at 3.1, almost up to the one-third distance. And the efficiency of the movements, you'd think he's actually just out on a distance session, an easy training session. Kali Lasilla has started for Finland. This is Remo Fischer, who will have seen his uh, teammate. Not often he gets to start after Dario Colonia. This has to be the one and only Pedro Nortug. 115. We mustn't discount Paul Turin and showing an incredible improvement in his skating technique. Well, I don't think. Uh, just waiting to see which of the Russians start, Mike. Um, we saw a number of the Russian women pulling out. They've decided not to complete the tour here in Finland. They'll start their preparations for traveling to North America. Yaparov highly likely to decide uh, he doesn't want to start. Akhmadiev of Kazakhstan, no real threat to the leaders. They've uh, separated the seeds by, with one athlete, so there's a good minute between uh, each of the seeds. The next big name to go would be Dmitry Yaparov. Well, he is on the start line, that's uh, good news. And I hope Kriakov enters as well. Twenty-six years old, about as strong as he's going to get. Russia's biggest problem is finding their best athletes, Mike. Uh, one and a half million competitive cross-country skiers. It's a, it is a difficult one, and when you bring them all together or to have the trial out, uh, there are some very talented young athletes out there, but they don't have, they can't prepare the skis. They don't have the finance to prepare the skis like the national team members, so it is a wee bit difficult to find them. Representing the Riga Ski Club in Latvia is Arvis Alipens. It's one of the smaller teams. One of their biggest problems is not having the same sort of equipment as the uh, top skiers. They may have the same brand of skis, but uh, like Nautic, who will get what, 20, 30 pairs of skis, maybe even 40 taken down to the glacier during the summer months to test and find the pairs that suit him best. Uh, the other athletes don't have that luxury. I actually heard that it's as many as up to 100 <laughs> pairs to get the right <laughs> feel, and uh, they, they, they're looking at that in the, on the glaciers, as you see. Incredible. Good work rate from Hoffman of USA, and he's not going to be that far off the pace. Maybe less than 10 seconds. Uh, that last shot foreshortening the distance somewhat. Look how close the positions are. The yellow box down the bottom right of your screen, the position that Hoffman will go into when he crosses the line. 19th place, only 13 seconds off the best.
And finally, we come to the last three starters. Petter Nortuk starts number 115. And that is as aggressive a start as we've ever seen from Petter Nortuk. And uh, we know now that he wants a good time today. Legkov cannot sit pretty in the leader's enclosure because Nortuk is hunting. Roman Ferger goes for Switzerland, number 116. Could be a lonely ski for him, certainly after he's completed his first lap. Will he see Nortuk? <laughs> I don't think you'll see much from him. He's not going to lose, you know, quite honest, uh, too much. Maybe uh, down to 30 seconds, because Ferger is in, in good form at the moment. And, uh, well, on the longer distance, he is the reigning champion on the Engadine Marathon. 42 kilometers, very flat course, though, in uh, what, the second week in March in Switzerland. And, Mike, no sign of Nikita Kriakov, yesterday's winner. Yes, I don't suppose we expected him on the, on the skating. He's an out-and-out -out, uh, classic expert. He does do the skating sprints as well, but uh, 10 kilometres over this terrain, he's not that suited for it. An out-and-out so, -out sprinter. So he'll be saving himself for the next round of World Cups, which take place in uh, America and Canada. They go to Quebec, they go to Calgary. Alfredson started so well at uh, 1.4 and at the three kilometer marker, but he's, he's dropped the pace significantly now, maybe too hard in the first section. And now this is his punishment payback. Oh, 26, it's a huge drop off. Just the momentum thinking, Patrick, the way that Pedro Nortug uh, exited the stadium, surely he's going to set the fastest time uh, at the 1.4, the first uh, marker that we have. Well, he should be there in uh, roughly a minute's time because he's been out on the tracks for uh, a minute and a half now. And uh, the leading time at that first 1.4, three minutes, 10 seconds. Paul Goldberg, the fastest. Uh, in fact, the leader in the finish only went through in fifth place. That, of course, Legkov 1.5 outside. At 6.4, Legkov pretty much taking control. Sure Rota in second there. Rota strong over the closing stages, but he didn't have a sprint for the last 500 metres. And that has cost him the top spot today. Toby Angra. 18th position, you think the uh, former champion will be happy with that? 28 seconds behind? 28, I don't think he'll be overly disappointed. I know that they're wanting their biggest impression this season at the World Championships in uh, Val de Fiemme. 16 seconds the margin for Lukas Bauer. If he can maintain that difference behind the leader, he'll go into the top five when he crosses the line. Easier said than done. I've just noticed Yaparov has gone through the initial time checks so on Norto. Ah, there he is, coming soon. Yeah, Goldberg uh, coming through. Goldberg looks, uh, skis a little bit like uh, Petter Nortug from a distance. In fact, this is Pet <laughs> it is Petter Nortug, 115, going through the uh, first intermediate, a lap ahead of Goldberg, his teammate. And um, we'll uh, give you Nortug's split time as soon as we can. He should get one at 1.4. Well, uh, Nortuk has gone through there, Patrick. He's in 17th position, 7.4 seconds behind. Is he taking an easy start? Can he attack from there? It's quite a margin to drop off in the quite an easy segment of the track. And I do think this uh, snowfall is playing a little part. Yeah, that's a big uh, margin to give away. Pulser on in. The leader of the World Cup standings, having finished with uh, a second in Yelavari and a fifth in the sprint race yesterday. He's on 117 points. Sunbi on 100 points for Norway. And then Petter Nortug in third place at the moment on 82 points. I think we're going to have a fascinating season. I don't think Colonia and Nortug are going to have it all their own, own way this year. Well, those are the standings at 3.1 uh, 
don't read too much into them. There have been plenty of changes since then. We're much more interested in the 8.1 kilometre stage where Legkoff, Rota, Magnificat, Hoffer and Schernersoff are the uh, top names. Now, the Norwegian camp might be a little bit concerned. Their main man, Nortuk, seven, seven seconds in the first kilometre and a half. That's a massive margin, Mike. And that's the terrain, eh? the, the drop-off from the stadium. It's really on your equipment. Yes, there is a, a, a long uh, 600, 700 metres climb up to the 1.4 marker. So it is an indication of Nortuk's form to date. And it's not looking overly good, but uh, when your name is Peter Nortug, you can change things in a race like no other person. But he is much, much better at the mass starts and the pursuits. He likes to race people rather than the clock. No, he, that's it. That's where he's at his best. His mindset changes. There's Halverson. Remember, he's got the second fastest time at 1.4. And really, since then, he has just dropped off the pace of the leaders. I felt what we saw of Paul Torrey and I felt maybe his skis or the preparation of the bases of his skis were not quite as good. They don't have the, the truck, the lorry which drives all the skis around. It's just a basic wax room and, and you need big, good backup. And the Kazakhstan team don't quite have that. We should check up on Sunbi, Mike. Uh, I think he's in the top 10 just, almost 30 seconds off the leaders at the finish. He started with the red bib today, the leader of the, uh, the Distance World Cup, and he might be losing that bib. Now we go with Nortuk, 3.1. Has he made back any of that time? He was seven seconds outside Legkoff's time. It's not going to be too bad. Uh, what's he got, 13 seconds to go? He's going to be... Four or five seconds down, maybe a little more. I'd make that 10, 11 or even 12 seconds because it's still quite a climb to the finish. There goes Legkoff's time and Nortuk still with a little bit of work to do. What will the margin be and will he be able to pull it back? 7.1 at the last intermediate. It's 6.9, it stayed roughly the same. <laughs> Well, Nortug has a huge amount of support. This is the man that he's trying to chase down, Legkoff, who is in the finish. In fact, he's in the leader's enclosure at the moment, sitting on about five reindeer skins, enjoying himself because he has set the time that no one else has been able to match so far. 21.52, and uh, there you see his intermediate at 3.1. Already he was starting to turn on the power. Just looking at Nortug's uh, time at 1.4 and now at 3.1, he's pulled a little bit of time back. So I think Nortug just, although we saw him sprint out of the start gates, I think he took that first bit a little steady and he's fully aware of what he needs to do. The rest of the world are ahead of him and uh, he will eat those split times up. He's ninth, only 6.9 seconds So behind. when he comes to 8.1, if he's within 10 seconds of the leader, he can make it back. But to do that, he has to produce one of his spectacular sprints. And you can't keep doing that. Surely it's easier to, to win it by running a steady race. I, I'm with you. I'm with you. And I, and I do think normally we could say, yes, from the 8.1, he could pull back 10 seconds. But remember, his uh, sprint races yesterday, four times up the massive climb. Legkov didn't do any of that. Yeah, very good point. Very good point. But and uh, it, 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 it's, it's uh, a special man who doesn't get some form of exhaustion and in fact as we saw from uh, Nortug his lactate levels were sky high and uh, in fact stopped him producing one of his special sprints over the last 50 meters good reach up the hill for Halverson but uh, we, we, we saw him well slow down from the second fastest time through the, the first split and then now he's going to be, what, some 40 seconds off the lead time. It's still a good performance. Yeah, I, th I think Nortug, Mike, needs to stay within 30 seconds of uh, today's winner, which it looks as though he will do, and uh, then rely on the bonus points that he won in the sprint yesterday to put him in, in, in pole position for the start tomorrow. If he, starts, if he starts first tomorrow, he's going to be very difficult to beat. That's, that's so true. Halverson, uh, now 49 seconds, dropping a little more. 
But uh, it's another interesting one. Uh, Nortuk doesn't normally find himself in this situation, being way at the back of the field. Some of the top names have gone earlier, and he's chasing them down. What's his mindset going to be going through if the split times begin to drop off again? Yeah, if the split times are good at 6.4, there's no doubt that he'll dig a little bit deeper. 24 seconds behind for Lukas Bauer. Work to do for the Czech number one. Started number 106, no bonus points for Bauer yesterday. So he'll find himself some way behind the uh, leaders of this mini tour at the start tomorrow. Three days, three races. It's quite a punishing routine for the beginning of the season. Really punishing, especially those who went through to the, only six of them, through to the final of the sprint races. Goldberg, who had the fastest intermediate time, no one will match it now, with three minutes 10 at 1.4. He's uh, faded a little. He's uh, going to be, what, 40 seconds outside the leaders. That will put him outside the top 10 positions today. It's always nice to see someone have a crack at a race, Mike, but uh, a little like Andy Musgrave. It's frustrating when you know they could have been quicker had they just controlled the uh, initial part of the race. Yes, uh, again, learning, experience, time on skis, time in competitions, but I do like that mindset, someone who's giving everything. Twelfth position for Goldberg. The overall World Cup leader on his own at the moment and suffering as a result. 30 seconds the margin and Polteranin is heading for 15th place or worse at the moment and uh, that yellow bib will certainly be surrendered to one of the other top performers today. Well, the cameras didn't uh, pick up on it, but Nortuk has uh, gone through the halfway. He's still only 7.5 seconds behind, and he's uh, in seventh position. So he is moving up the field. He was in ninth at the previous check. I'm still slightly mystified by that seven-second margin at the first checkpoint, Mike. I'm just wondering whether he had a stumble uh, on, the, on, on a section of the course that we haven't got the cameras on. Or, or whether it was a tactical move to take it easy. It's, it's unlike him, isn't it? The, yeah. Especially the energy he set out from the start. Uh, he went round faster than anybody out of the stadium. Maybe, maybe he did take a fall. Yeah, two or three seconds you wouldn't have been concerned about, but seven seconds is a big margin at this level. And he's managed to maintain that uh, for the last three and a half kilometres. So he's, uh, he's certainly not going to be too far off the pace set by Lekov. Lekov doesn't look that happy. <laughs> Cold sitting there. He must be delighted though, really inside. Food and drink essential. The earlier you get it in, the quicker the recovery takes place. And with less than 24 hours before the next race, recovery is all important here in Finland. Well, there are the standings uh, at the finish at the moment, but we still have a few big names to cross the line. Jauhijervi of Finland should be in shortly. We've got Teodor Pedersen out on the tracks for Sweden. We haven't seen much of him. What's your prediction, Mike? 20 seconds uh, remaining. I think it's still going to be... Uh, close to that seven second margin behind Legkov. Most of them taking 20 seconds from that group of photographers and coaches on the right. He's getting so much information, not just from the Norwegian coaches, but from every coach. They, they admire this man and, and who wouldn't? He's so good. Yeah, maybe, uh, I think he might have dropped a, what, two, three further seconds, maybe down at 10 seconds. Yeah, he could be 10 seconds behind. And therefore it, at this stage in the race, at 6.4, it's looking unlikely for a victory. In fact, he's looking exhausted. He's pushed hard. He's pushed hard. He's tried to maintain the pace, but uh, now he's starting to fade. And uh, that 30-second margin that we were talking about is starting to look more realistic. And Legkov can relax in his seat of luxury because uh, I can't see anyone else out there who can challenge. 6.4.
Rota has finished, Schoenersoff has finished, Magnifica has finished, Jespersen, Helner have both finished, and they're behind Lekov in the finish area. So all the, uh, the, the faster freestyle skiers today are out of the running. Hoffman of the USA, 22.30, not a bad run, 38 second margin. I think he'll be reasonably happy with that. Best of the North Americans so far today, Mike. Just uh, pick up on that. I think it probably is Hoffman. Yep, 16th position, uh, Hoffman, only 38, it's a great time. Alex Harvey sitting in 14th at the moment as well, at the finish. These are the standings at 6.4, everyone through that stage of the race. Now remember Nikita Kriakov, who won yesterday, deciding not to race today or tomorrow. He'll save his energies for the sprint events, and there are plenty of them taking place in North America. 8.1 is the next checkpoint. Uh, let's have an estimate on Nortug's deficit at 8.1. He was 13 seconds behind. That margin grew very quickly between 5 and 6.8. We could be looking at a 20, 25 second margin. Possibly, quite possibly. But remember, Nortug showing maybe that he's, he, he is fatigued from yesterday. He lost his time on this segment. Uh, sorry. Out from the stadium, he was still seven. Yes, he dropped, he lost it on an easier segment. So I wonder if his skis for the first time ever are running a little slower than normal. He seems to be able to fight and match on the climb, but losing it on the perceived easier sections of the course. Jonsson is 103, just behind his teammate Anders Sodergren, and Jonsson has taken uh, at least 27, 28, almost 29 seconds off Sodergren and is still 46 seconds behind, so not the best of days for the Swedes. Marcus Hellner is the number one Swede at the moment, lying in eighth position, 22 seconds behind, and next best Swede, uh, we have to go down the order a bit, we'll try and update you on that. Uh, yeah, he's in relaxation mode. He must, when he saw that last split time at 13.5, he must be thinking, ah, surely Nortug can't do it, but if anyone can, it is Nortug. I'm also thinking, Mike, that the wind, which has picked up over the last half hour, whether that is the uh, the factor that has slowed Nortug down. That initial phase is quite open as you make your way towards the far end of the course into the wind. and. Uh, Certainly, if it's slightly downhill into the wind, you're so much slower than if there's no wind. Small factors, but they, they do make a difference. And of course, the, we mentioned it earlier, the little bit of powder that's blowing around, the snow is powder at minus 14, and that slows the tracks down marginally as well. Now, Nortuk coming up to 8.1. This is the last of the really big climbs, and then, of course, just that steep hill into the stadium to finish. He'll be able to dig deep into his reserves at that stage. As we watch Lucas Bauer finishing 30.7, hopefully we'll get back to Nortuk at 8.1. <laughs> Lekov's time, 18.08. There it goes. And uh, could be another 15 seconds. I think there's uh, a resurgence from Nortug. It was 13, now it's 9.5. He is on the charge. He's left himself. Well, we did say if he's 10 seconds behind at 8.1, Mike, he can, uh, he can do some damage. He is amazing. <laughs> he is totally and utterly amazing. He's got something back. Legkov is now thinking, oh, no, 9.5 <laughs> seconds. Nortug seemed to be working incredibly hard, but not going very far. It, it wasn't the most efficient glide we've ever seen from him. And I think you might be right. I think there might have been a slight problem with the skis. We may pick that up in a post-race interview but if he doesn't win he's not obliged to do the interview no that is that is so true and for the, the fastest finisher from 8.1 to the finish line so far is Magnifica he put in an incredible time the second fastest Legkov Skua Rota lost uh, some seven seconds on uh, Legkov from this point and those two men sitting first and second Shows you how important it is to save something for the cut last couple of the k's. final climb. But if anybody loves steep climbs normally, and if anyone loves sprinting, it's Peter Nortuk. Well, he would have been, uh, you, certainly he would have been cheered by the fact that the split has come down again. But uh, it, his time has yo-yoed all the way round. Every single time he's losing it on the downhill, gaining it on the uphill. Maybe he's just trying to entertain us, keep us on the edge of our seats. What do you think? Is he going to take it? Well, I do think he's uh, the best thing to hit cross-country skiing for many, many decades. 
I'm trying to think of who else used to, to entertain like Nortuk does. Uh, Tommy Wasberg was a great man on the scene. You never quite knew what he was going to do. Gundus Farn was unbelievable, but he was uh, not quite in that, uh, well, skiing-wise, ability-wise, Gundus Farn can certainly lay claims to being the best ever. I think so, and, and it would have been so interesting to see those big names you mentioned, Vassberg, Gundesfan, in today's modern formats. It changes everything. These formats are exciting, they're different. Lekov doesn't know, well, he seems to know. But Paul Tarainen was congratulating them, they're good mates, they do train together. Well, I'm surprised they haven't got an extra layer on. It's uh, fantastic clothing that uh, they use on the tour now. It's quite funny, Lenkov when it was minus 20, was it up here last year? And they're all saying, well, what do you think about these cold conditions? Said, what cold conditions? This is nothing. He doesn't mind the cold. He still doesn't even zip up his tracksuit at minus 14, 15. Now he knows that Nortuk is uh, coming and coming towards the final climb. So under a kilometre to go for Petter Nortuk, the man who's uh, won just about everything except the Tour de Ski. That will be his main focus this year. This is the bottom of the last climb. And within the next five seconds, we'll see how much fight there is left. The tempo is good. The glide is much better on this uphill section. And now he switches into overdrive. He he feels that a top two, top one maybe is possible. 21.50 to the two, the time he needs. He has to round that last corner with 20 seconds in hand if he's going to deny Legkoff at this stage. It's looking OK. He's getting the splits. Was that four seconds down? The coach could only indicate it because Nortuk isn't going to hear with the noise up that final climb. The smile has gone. Oh. Lekkoff knows that it's going to be close. 32 was the time he needed. I think uh, Lekkoff is safe, but Nortuk certainly is going to put him close enough to be the last starter or the first starter in the pursuit tomorrow. A little fatigue around the last corner. This is where he failed himself yesterday in the classic sprint, but it's another fine performance from Nortuk. Remember at one stage he was over 13 seconds behind and he's clawed it back very well. He goes into second place ahead of Magnifica, only 6.8 behind, exactly the margin he lost in the first kilometer. What an amazing athlete, uh, Pedro Nortug, to be so out there on your own in the race and uh, be able to do what he's done there, but uh, no discredit to Legkov, he was better today. Yeah, perfect pacing from Legkov. He was uh, in the top three in every split all the way round, and he produced the second fastest finish time, we think. Maybe Nortug was the fastest finish time in the end. No, yes, in fact, Nortug, uh, three seconds faster than Lekov. So the three fastest finishers over the last 2K have finished first, second, and third. <laughs> incredible, incredible. There's the, the effort. And after the sprints yesterday, four times around a 1.4 kilometer, he is a legend, Nortug. But how often can he do that? There has to be a cost. There was last season, we saw, you can't keep doing that. He, uh, he went into doing some longer distance races, but he did not have the spark after the Tour de Ski. So one more race to go in Kusumo for the cross-country skiers. It's uh, over the 15-kilometer distance in the classic style for the men. Will uh, Russia's Legkov be able to hang on? He's a very good sprinter. We've seen him win the Sprint World Championship, so he won't let Norta come waltzing past in the last 100 meters. It's going to be a fascinating race tomorrow. Well, not a bad day's racing, Mike. Uh, no real surprises in the women's? No, not really. With Bjergen taking the field by such a, a huge margin, she's just looking untouchable in the early part of the season. The men's, it's a pity Lekov didn't make the finals of the sprint because Nortug is going to gain a whole lot of bonus seconds from his uh, sprinting yesterday, which Lekov didn't achieve. Roman Ferger, who started 30 seconds behind uh, Petr Nortug, looking to get a top 80 finish. And he's just inside that, 144 behind. That's not a bad effort from uh, Ferger. A little bit unlucky to draw bib number 116, especially as Nikita Kriakov didn't start. But uh, one Russian may have been absent, another was very much on form. Ligkov storming his way into the finish. He looked relaxed throughout the perfectly paced race. Oh, he has to be so, so happy with this performance. And he's so bullish. He's such a, a worker, charges through the, the tougher terrain, Lekov. 
Well, here are the finishing times today. Remember, this is just the second of three races that make up the mini tour in uh, Kusumo. And so tomorrow the tour will be decided. 50 World Cup points for Legkov for winning today's time trial. Norta gets a good handful of points as well ahead of Magnifica. Further down the order, Lukas Bauer, 13th place. Maddy Heikkonen keeps Finnish hopes alive tomorrow, but 34 seconds behind. Plus, he won't get any sprint bonus points. Emil Jonsson, 25th, 46 seconds behind. He was just outside the top six yesterday, so Jonsson's dropped down the order a little. Kershaw, Freeman from Canada and USA in 35 and 36, but today belonging to Alexander Legkov of Russia. Welcome back to Finland and the crowd numbers are growing now because uh, that is in anticipation of the uh, well firstly for the cross country a lot of people turned up to watch the end of the men's race Alexander and then, of course we've got the ski jumping to the coming up later. Today. How was your competition winner? for you? Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, today is super competition for me in good shape and very cold and for me it's better in the cold. <laughs> your shape is very good, it is going up. What did you do this week to get ready for today? Oh, uh, yeah, and uh, today uh, good competition and uh, uh, last half I in my shape and better and better and maybe next week uh, maybe uh, uh, next competition and better for better better and, and uh, championship and, and winner maybe. Thank you very much and congratulations for today. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, he didn't quite uh, get the gist of the question, which was uh, what training did he put in this week to get into shape? I don't think he will have done anything different, Mike. Uh, the, the, the workload, once the racing season starts, tends to drop away. And, and a lot of the Russians tend to work incredibly hard before the race season starts. So as they recover, bizarrely, while they're racing, uh, their form does rise. And I think that's exactly what he was, he misread maybe the, the, what the question was, but that's exactly what he's saying. He's only going to get better and better because the workload has suppressed him. He felt good today. Well, he won today. And uh, he's very confident. Yeah. Well, we'll try and find out what happened to Petr Nortug. He lost seven seconds in the first kilometer. He finished the race 6.9 off the pace of the winner. Still second place for Nortug, so in a very good position to win the tour here in Kasamo for the second year in succession. What a fighter he is. A pleasure to have him out on the tracks. You never quite know what he's going to do, but you do know he will dig very, very deep to win. Well, a fantastic uh, weekend so far. There's plenty more coming up, of course. And uh, ski jumping and Nordic combined to be concluded today. As we look at the results, this is the standing in the triple. So the time margin's on the right. Nortig will start first. He's got a 40-second margin over Polteranin. And Legkov starts 53 seconds behind. It's a 15-kilometer classic race. Legkov's going to be pressed to catch that. Jonsson of uh, Sweden starts 55 behind. I'm not sure we're going to see him finish in the top five. Marcus Hellner might must be a threat for a top five finish 119 down yes he gets it although it, it's a classic technique tomorrow maybe not suit him as much as say Johan Jervi Lukas Bauer certainly in the classic that's where Bauer is better and these men I think uh, too far behind Kershaw and Freeman uh, should have a good fight together they start three seconds apart as we go down to the bottom of the start sheet Nortug will start first having finished second today but it's Alexander Legkov of Russia who celebrates tonight Well, that's all we've got time for for now. We've also got some biathlon coming up today and uh, the sprints taking place in Ostersund with the pursuits tomorrow. Thanks for your company so far. Do join us for the biathlon, the ski jumping and the Nordic combined still to come. And then the Alpine this evening. <laughs>